Welcome to the lesson on responding to cardiac arrest. In this video, we'll discuss cardiac arrest management and responding to cardiac arrest with CPR, shock energy, advanced airway, and drug therapy. The first management step in cardiac arrest is to begin high-quality CPR. For details on high-quality CPR, please refer to the BLS videos or your corresponding BLS manual. For pediatric cardiac arrest algorithm, refer to figure 16 in your corresponding PALS manual. To ensure CPR quality when responding to cardiac arrest, make sure the chest compression rate is at least 100 to 120 per minute. Compression's depth should be one-third the diameter of the chest, that is 1.5 inches in infants and 2 inches in children. Minimize interruptions and do not overventilate. Additionally, rotate compressor every 2 minutes. If no advanced airway is available, the compression to ventilation ratio should be 15 to 2. If advanced airway is available, then give 8 to 10 breaths per minute with continuous chest compressions. When giving shock energy, the first shock should be 2 joules per kilogram. Second shock should be 4 joules per kilogram. Subsequent shocks should be greater than or equal to 4 joules per kilogram. Maximum dose of the shock should not exceed 10 joules per kilogram or adult dosage. When working with advanced airways, use supraglottic advanced airway or ET intubation. Use waveform capnography to confirm and monitor E-tube placement. Once the advanced airway is in place, give one breath every 6 to 8 seconds, that is 8 to 10 breaths per minute. If providing drug therapy, epinephrine dosage via intravenous or intraosseous access should be 0.01 mg per kilogram. Repeat this dosage every 3 to 5 minutes. If there's no intravenous or intraosseous access, then you may give endotracheal dose of 0.1 mg per kilogram. Amiodarone dosage should be given by an intravenous or intraosseous access in 5 mg per kilogram bolus during cardiac arrest. You may repeat this up to two times for refractory VF or pulses VT. This concludes our lesson on responding to cardiac arrest. Next, we'll review post-resuscitation care. 